This is Twit. Before you、uh, go into this、uh, next story about John McAfee, I do want to tell people what you're about to hear might be triggering if you're considering suicide. There is a national suicide prevention lifeline in the United States. You can call right now for free and get、uh, free confidential support if you're in distress. Great crisis resources for you or your loved ones. It's 1-800-273-TALK. 1-800-273-8255. Five, five. We just want to be responsible since we're going to talk about、uh, John McAfee next. That's good. And, and we know that COVID has been a, an extra stressor for people. Especially、too. teenagers.、Uh, I know of two teenagers who、uh, uh, took the very poor choice、um, because of, I think, because of loneliness during COVID. So, yeah, we're all、wow. going through it, but you don't have to go through it alone. And if you're not in the United States,、uh, you can Google Suicide Prevention Lifeline and you'll be able to find one in your area. Good. I'm, don't, I'm don't, we, don't, we don't want to lose you. We, don't, we, we, you know, we want you to be around. Anyway, yeah,、um, I, I, was, I was unhappy when I was younger. And, it's normal. You know, and that's the、I'm、problem with suicide. I, it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem. You know, it, things do get better. I, I know. And,、uh, but sometimes we, we just can't take it. And don't, don't do、yeah. it. Don't do it. So、uh, I wanted to note that last Wednesday, Uh, John McAfee、uh, was found dead by hanging、uh, at the age of 75 in his jail cell in Barcelona, Spain.、Uh, his extradition to the United States, where he would have been facing a number of legal charges of willful tax evasion, had finally been approved by a court in Spain.、Uh, and despite his earlier statements that he would never. Take his own life.、Uh, and he said that foul play would definitely be involved if he ever appeared to have done so.、Uh, everyone assumes that he changed his mind、uh, and, and that that must have been what happened. His attorney said that his nine months in prison、uh, had brought him to despair and attempts to revive him had failed.、Um, and as we all know,、uh, John was a character and a half.、Uh, You know, with a life full of antics. I think that the first time we talked about him on this podcast was when、uh, he was being sought in connection. Of course, he was famous, right? Because of McAfee and McAfee Systems and McAfee yeah. AV. Yeah.、Um, I didn't realize he had some connection to Zone Alarm, which was a little he, horrifying. Yeah. For me. Funny, well, but back in the day, I think he was、um, quite a bit more respectable. <laughs> Uh, you know, he made $100 million selling McAfee to、uh, Intel. Yeah. So he, he did quite well, but he, he squ- as far as we know, he squandered almost all of it、uh, in kind of oddball. Well, things. and things went w- weird, too. I、yeah. think the first time we talked about him was when he was being sought in connection with the murder of his neighbor, a guy by the name of Gregory Fall, F A U L L. In Belize. Yes.、Yeah. He, he was his next door neighbor in Belize. His, th- this neighbor had been found dead, shot in the back of his head with a nine millimeter.、Uh, and, and prior to that, Gregory had previously confronted John after one of John's quite aggressive dogs had bitten someone in the area. And the dogs were apparently known to get loose and run in wild in packs, terrifying the community. So, you know, he was a source, McAfee was, of. Adventure and controversy. <laughs> Adventure is a good word for it. Yeah.、Uh, in his earlier years, he had worked at NASA,、uh, Xerox, and Lockheed Martin before launching the world's first commercial antivirus software in '87. And in fact, he and I interacted just once by phone. Well, that's what I was curious if you had met him. Yeah.、Uh, it was before his launch of McAfee AV. Uh, after I had written a series of three columns in InfoWorld, which he was reading, which imagined with as much detail and accuracy as I could exactly how a theoretical software virus would behave. Oh, interesting. And I don't recall now how clear I made it that this was conjecture, but a quite animated John McAfee. Who was unknown by the PC industry at the time, phoned my office, wanting to compare notes and virus samples. He was sure that, like, and amazed to discover that I had viruses, 
clearly because I had exactly described <laughs> the behavior of the viruses he had. And he was very disappointed to learn. And actually, it took me some time to convince him and like talk him down. And, and I'm unsure that I ever really did. I, I think he just he didn't really believe that my three column series about software viruses was entirely written from my imagination as a software developer, not as a virus discoverer. Anyway, I, I said, sorry, John, I, I'm like, really, 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 I don't have any. I, you know, if I was the, if I was a virus, this is what I, this is how I would behave. And he's like, really? Oh, well, I, I thought we could, you know, I'd, sh I'd show you mine if you showed me yours. Mm. So anyway. He, uh, I, I saw some stories about him fairly aggressively uh, calling people uh, to get information uh, or, or copies of viruses. He was working at Lockheed when he uh, got a copy of The Brain in the late 80s and started writing McAfee. But, you know, I think he wanted to write an antivirus, but he needed to understand what it was he was blocking, what he was preventing. Yeah. Uh, did and a good job. It worked, right? It's funny you mentioned that, Leo, because um, I was thinking the same thing this morning. Like, okay, we know how they work now. So w would it have been behavior-based? It's hard to imagine it would have been, like, signature-based because, what? There, there, there like, weren't any. There were four or something. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You, know, you know, yeah. So crazy. He probably was trying to come up with heuristics so that you could watch for a certain kind of behavior. Um, that's that's the ideal way to do it. Signatures plus heuristics. But I don't. Yeah. Know. Yeah. And we didn't have an internet back then, so right. they had to live. They had to jump from floppy. You to You had floppy. to send them a floppy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, John, I got one. Did, it's on a floppy here. We, we we didn't have USB. We didn't have thumb drives. All we had, the only thing that, that, that was transportable was diskettes. Right. And so the viruses, such as they were, had to be very tiny. I think I remember that some of them lived in track zero because because there was still, I think there was still cylinder alignment. So I think there was space on track zero after the boot sector. And so you'd have, there were like, there were, I, I, I remember boot sector viruses. I mean, they That's had to right. be- that's right. Really, really small. So if you put it, what you do is you put it on the boot sector of a floppy. And if somebody booted that floppy, attempted to boot from that floppy, it would infect their system. This is pre-hard hard drive. Drives. Or did it, it have hard drives? The, okay. Oh, yeah. Jump to the hard drive. If they had a hard drive. Right. Uh, 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 or it would go into RAM and then move on to any, any other, other floppy that, you used. That yes. they then stuck right. in. Yeah. You know, and, and before you knew it, I mean, and, and I remember there were like red floppies that were infected yes. that, that researchers yes. were, like, Don't touch. were like using. Don't yes. touch. Yes. Wow.